Well, didn't we hit the jackpot this week? DICE have confirmed that new DLC content will be coming to the CTE with maps from the They Shall Not Pass expansion going live very soon, later today, once the servers are put up, along with all the new weaponry, it seems as well. Now, I've managed to get my hands on some early in-game renders of the weapons via Danny on PC. So a massive thanks to him for letting me use this footage. His channel is linked down in the description, and you should 100% go and subscribe to him. He's great for Easter egg content too, if you're into that sort of thing. Now, not only have I got some footage here, I've also got some weapon statistics as well, data mined by Simthic.com, and the unlock requirements for each of the new weapons coming with They Shall Not Pass, including the melee weapons as well. So let's get into this. The first weapon, the one that I think is the most interesting from the bunch, the Shosha MG. There are two variants coming for this weapon. We'll be getting a low weight variant and a telescopic variant, and both of them will require you to fully use the support class to unlock them. Starting with the low weight, you'll need to score 50 kills with the Lewis Gun Suppressive variant and then perform 75 resupplies of ammunition. And for the telescopic variant, you'll need to net 15 kills in a round with the Bene Merche Telescopic and then 10 kills with the Mortar. Although I don't think those 10 kills need to be done in one round, they can be spread out a little bit. Now, the Shosha has been a tricky weapon to gauge, really, since its inclusion in the DLC was first announced, and that's mainly because of its rather restrictive low rate of fire. In real life, the weapon barely scrapes 280 rounds a minute and was notoriously unreliable. Here in Battlefield 1, however, DICE have bent the rules a little bit to allow it to become a bit more competitive. And actually, they've given it an edge in one particular area too. Damage. The Shosha will be the first MG in Battlefield 1 to break the 23 damage maximum barrier. And DICE have set it to 35 for this weapon. They've also decided to increase that rate of fire just a little bit, upping it to 360 rounds a minute. That means it's a high damage, low rate of fire machine gun capable of taking down players in just a few hits. Suddenly, this weapon has gone from one that I thought would be almost dead on arrival into one that I cannot wait to get my hands on. Mowing down players in the trenches with those powerful bullets is going to be a blast, I'm sure of it. The next weapon we have here is the Shogren Inertial Shotgun, the weapon that really no one expected DICE to include in this DLC. Now, it seems there will only be one variant available for this, the Factory, and you'll need to complete some tricky tasks to unlock this bad boy. You need 50 kills with the Model 10A Shotgun variant. Nice to see DICE mixing it up, trying to get players to use something different than the 10A Hunter. And then after that, in one round, you need to perform 15 kills with the M97 Trench Gun Hunter variant. Now, what makes this shotgun different from the rest, though? Well, it will become the fastest firing semi-automatic shotgun in the game, trading off a little bit of damage overall for a slightly faster fire rate than the M97 trench gun. Now, it holds 13 pellets in a shell, doing 8.4 damage per bullet, which theoretically means it can drop players in one shot, but that cone of fire will likely land some of those pellets onto different body parts with lower damage multipliers. I'm not a huge fan of shotguns in general, it's not really my playstyle preference, but no doubt I'll be giving this thing a try once I've unlocked it. Next in line, we have the LaBelle Model 1886 Rifle. This new bolt action is coming with the French faction, and it comes in two variants, the infantry and the Sniper. Now, I love sniping in Battlefield 1, so anything that's going to spice that up in terms of selection is always welcome. It comes active with the Sweet Spot mechanic, very similar to a lot of the other rifles in this game, and it sits very much in the middle of the road. 
being a rifle that can fire at a good rate, 56 rounds a minute, not too fast, not too slow, it can deal a good amount of damage at range, with the sweet spot starting at 50 meters and extending out to 87.5 meters, and it's backed up by a solid magazine size of 8 rounds and then one in the chamber. So think of it really as a middle ground between the SMLE and the Russian 1895, leaning a little bit more towards the 1895 overall, I'd say. To unlock the infantry variant, you need to net 50 kills with the Gewehr M95 infantry rifle and then perform 20 spot flare assists. And to unlock the sniper variant, you need to net 5 headshots in a round with the Russian 1895 sniper and then perform 10 spot assists with the Periscope Scout Gadget. Everyone loves a sniper rifle, and I cannot wait to get my hands on the Labelle. Fourth weapon on the list, we have the Ribe Roll 1918 Carbine. Now, we all thought we'd be getting the SMG version of this weapon, but no, DICE added the Carbine. And you know what's most interesting about this weapon? It comes equipped with a bipod which I think is quite an odd choice. And that bipod though, according to the in-game description, will allow the Ribe roll to become extremely accurate under sustained fire, although with just 25 rounds in a magazine, you might struggle to take down more than one target or two at a time really with that amount of bullets. It fires at the same rate as the MP18, 550 rounds a minute, and it will do very similar damage overall, with a maximum of 23 damage at close range. Now to get your hands on this, you need to land 50 kills with the Automatico Factory, and then 20 headshots with the MP18 Optical. This weapon falls into the Assault class as more of a weapon that someone would take if they like to aim down their sights. This weapon has horrible hitfire accuracy, most likely to offset its incredible aimed accuracy and the inclusion of that bipod. Fifth weapon now, and this is the last one that I have some footage for, the RSC 1917. This is the medic weapon coming with They Shall Not Pass, and it's another weapon that sort of defies the standard conventions of the class that it sits in. These weapons all feel very, very different to the ones that are already included in the classes that we have. Now, this one's special because it's the first medic rifle to allow players to land a two-shot kill. So the damage on this thing is deadly. With a maximum of 53 damage at close range, and when I say 53 damage at close range, that's out to 44 meters. So you could be dropping enemies like there's no tomorrow, but as we know, weapons tend to be balanced with other detrimental factors. So how have they balanced the RSC? Well, it's got a very slow rate of fire, just 163 rounds a minute, and it can only hold six rounds in an internal magazine. There are two variants available in a DLC, the optical and the factory. To unlock the optical, you'll need to net 15 kills in a round with the auto-loading 8 factory variant, and then perform 75 heals, and then to unlock the factory version, you need to score 50 kills with the M1907 sweeper variant, and perform 50 revives in total. This sounds like a really cool new addition for weapons in the medic class, I'm excited to get my hands on this one. Covering off some of the other weapons now, however, I don't have any footage for these, so apologies there. First up is the MLE 1903 Extended, which will be available for one of the three secondary classes, so either Tanker, Pilot, or Cavalry. We don't know which one it is at the moment, it's just listed as Class 5 in the code, so we don't know which of the three classes that will be. The difference between the standard MLE 1903 and the Extended Basically magazine size and a little bit of accuracy in there. The extended bumps up the bullet count to 11, which isn't much over the standard 8, but clearly this is a weapon built for one of those dedicated classes of the vehicles in Battlefield 1. And now we have the new melee weapons. They're kind of split into two groups, and there are six of them in total. That's right, you heard me correct. 
six new melee weapons. I'll go with the first three because they seem to be linked directly to the DLC and they have their own unlock requirements. Get ready to grind out some melee kills. First up we have the Cogwheel Club. This is one of those intermediate weapons where it's got a higher damage per hit than the knives but ultimately it should perform very similarly to the standard club that we already have in the game. You can basically consider it as a cosmetic change for this DLC. To unlock it, you need to score 50 kills with the original club. Next is the Trench Fleur. This is one of the two knives coming that you can unlock. Again, this is very much a variation of a knife that we already have in Battlefield 1, but you'll need to amass 50 kills with the US Trench Knife to unlock it. And finally, the Nail Knife. This one does look pretty cool. It's basically an improvised metal spike. And to unlock it, you need to score 50 kills with the shovel. I mentioned there was a second group of melee weapons. Here they are. This screenshot here, grabbed again by Danny on PC, so thank you very much, shows off the Kukri, the Saber, and Billhook weapons. Now, I think these will be the new puzzle piece weapons added to the battle packs. The reason why I can't find any in-game descriptions for these on the CTE, so I wouldn't be surprised if these come out in some battle packs around the time of the release of the DLC. And that's it. You're all up to date with everything weapons focused when it comes to the They Shall Not Pass DLC for Battlefield 1. The CTE servers with the new maps will open up very soon and I'll be capturing gameplay there, posting it up here on my channel, so stay tuned for some brand new content later today. But until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.